not only uh, asked me to be here, but you've actually honored the youth of this nation. And that is who I represent today in front of all of you. So thank you so very much. <laughs> Carrying forward, uh, a list was perhaps read out. You know, sometimes it's you, all of these sort of things just go out of your mind. So it's a good uh, refresher for you that yes, you hold six Guinness World Book of Records and you know, all the other things that were read out. But before we go down all that route, there are certain things that come to my mind and I don't think there will be a better place to share this than this particular platform. And I think uh, this uh, uh, mindset that is there, which is going to be the future or is the future and the present of our country today. In a classroom, there was a teacher who came in, handed them a map and gave each student a map and uh, stepped back. Everybody received the map. The teacher said very clearly, let's tear up this map. So all the students, Then the moment everybody was asked that, have you torn away the map completely? Everybody in one voice said, yes, ma'am. Then the next voice that came from the teacher or the professor saying that, now you put it back together. Right? So there was a lone joker like me perhaps in the, in the class. And in the next 30 seconds or so, the hand went up. So the teacher and the rest of the classroom and everybody was quite shocked. He said, perhaps there is a question. But uh, there wasn't. He said, uh, ma'am, I've put the map together. And everybody was shocked in the class and so was the teacher. And didn't understand why and then was asked, how did you do it? What did you do? See, it was very simple. It was the easiest task to perform. And, uh, and asked why. He said, I flipped the map over. There was a human being that was designed behind the map. So today, all of you are, who are who, who's present here, all the young who's present here, I think that is what we need to do. Apni jo shuruwati door hai, the, the journey of a thousand mile begins with the first step. And I think the important part in this that we all need to realize, we all need to understand, is the fact that as human beings, we all need to come together. We all need to become one. We all need to be involved rather than participate because there are 99% people participating and 1% people being involved. The time and day and the moment has come where we all need to come together and be involved. There is no doubt that this world has become a smaller place, but person to person has moved far. So we have to understand that we cut that gap. There was a time where people never wore watches, but had time. And there is a time today that we all wear watches, but we have no time. So we need to understand the fact that that is a currency that we can only spend once. And once it's spent, it's never going to come back to you. So we need to understand, realize and be responsible of what we are going to do, how we are going to do it and what we are going to do to make a difference. The way I look at it very simply, and I can assure you, as I said, I'm going to stick to my promise. I'm not going to give you any jnana. I'm only going to give you some formulas which are hopefully going to be inspiring, which will hopefully try and tell you and make you recognize in what you need to do. I'm not going to talk to you about my story. The one word that I don't like is a story because it is fictional and I'm not a fictional person. I'm here in flesh and blood. Today, people that are sitting in front of me are sitting in flesh and blood. You are not a story. You are a reality of today's life, universe and this world, which is what we need to understand, absorb and completely appreciate and respect. Yes, I may have slept on a footpath at minus four degrees in my life. I may have cleaned toilets to be able to earn some money. I may have worked as a waiter to climb a ladder to become the general manager or a manager of the restaurant that I wanted to become. Yes, we must have defeated a restaurant that was, that was achieving or receiving the best restaurant trophy for seven years in a row. We perhaps 
came first for the first time of opening a restaurant, defeating a seven-year-old restaurant, I may have had a very small role to play, yes. As mentioned earlier, six Guinness World Book of Records, something perhaps in, at your age in the library, the only book I ever read, because it had a lot of pictures. That's all what you could read, right? Not what was written below, but you could see those lovely pictures. Ki, aray, aaj kis ki photo chapi hai, kis ne kya kiya hai. And that time you had it in your mind, ki, aray, kisi din hum bhi is kitab mein chapi hai, kaisa hoga? And then later you don't only dominate it, you don't not only enter it, but you make a mark that as being the only person as an independent individual to have made six records in, in the philanthropic side of things and that also just happened by the way, not because you actually thought about it. Everything that I mentioned to you, yes, may have received the Bharat Gaurav in the British Parliament, may have received the Rajasthan Gaurav recently, may be the advisor to the governor of Rajasthan. All of these things are very good. I'm very, very happy about it, but this is not what I'm here to talk to you about. That is not what I'm here to share. Does it make me happy? Yes, it does. Does it make me proud? Yes, it does. For a couple of reasons. One, one of the reasons is the fact that it has the name of your nation in front of it. That is something that I'm really proud of. When it was named after your country, which says very proudly, it says India, that was there. So that is something that makes you very proud. And of course, an achievement that inspires a lot, a young and the others who are present in your journey. So that is, I think, the beauty of it. But the point that I'm trying to make to you or drive home with all of you is something more powerful than all of this. Something more powerful than some, an individual's achievement. It certainly could be inspiring to all of you and it should be. But what is more important is already something that is possessed by you. It is on you. The idea is to recognize it. And I will start that list. Did we choose the country that we were going to be born in? Did we choose our parents, father or mother? Did we choose our religion? Did we choose our own, own name that belongs to us, which we very proudly uh, talk to and we have fights, no? And if someone has hit his name, then he doesn't want to kill him alone, then he doesn't want to kill me. There is a list of so many things that we can count, that we have all as individuals, everybody that perhaps is present here has not chosen. Right? Yet if there is a game, and I'll give you an example because of the land that we may be in, so in terms of association and understanding, it will be a lot simpler. So if India is playing a rival country, I'm sure it's rhyming in your mind which rival country we may be playing. And if we are, uh, and it is a sport of cricket, and it is, it is the finals, what sort of passion and enthusiasm we have for the nation uh, that we uh, cheer our country and make sure that we win and we paint our faces and all of that and be it for everything else that may be in the list, be it our parents, be it our country, be it our, our name, all of that. All these things were things that we did not choose. But the one thing that there is so beautiful about it is that we love it unconditionally. But we've not chosen it. The idea is in this temple of education that we stand here today could not be a more befitting thought that I could perhaps impart, leave, discuss, or share with you is why are we not loving something that we choose? When we have the power of loving things that we do not choose, let's also have the power of loving things that we choose for ourselves as well. So this also tells us in a lot of ways because it is a terminology that has only been used in its purest form. And it, is, it talks about love between people, individuals, or God. And that's what tells us very, very clearly that X or Y ke beech mein prem prakat hua ya Ishwar uske saamne prakat hue. The word prakat has always only been used for, for this purpose of caring, sharing, and loving. So the thought that I do want to leave you with, ladies and gentlemen, is that when you have the power, the capability, the competence, of being able to love things that you have not chosen, please love the things that you have also chosen. Thank you very much.